Hello there, it's Gary Cleveland with Cleveland Helicopter Services here in Plymouth, Indiana. And this is another free lesson for you concerning helicopter aerodynamics in my series of Helicopter Ground School on YouTube. Today we will talk about the symmetry of lift in the rotor system of a helicopter. And we will talk about how the helicopter overcomes that with blade flapping. And we will talk about retreating blade stall. In order to understand this, we will draw a picture of a helicopter on the whiteboard and we will do it from an overhead view. Here's my helicopter. For the purpose of this lesson, we will talk about a rotor system that is turning counterclockwise, meaning the tail rotor is on the left, thrusting towards the tail boom. This is a common rotor system for Robinson products, Schweitzer helicopters, Enstrom helicopters, and so forth. Now let's draw, for the purpose of this lesson, a two-bladed helicopter, and we're going to freeze the rotation of these blades, one being on the left, one being on the right for the purpose of the lesson. This is the advancing blade of the helicopter. So this blade is moving forward towards the front of the helicopter. This blade is the retreating blade. It is moving rearward, away from the front of the helicopter. Now, if we have zero wind and zero airspeed, there is no dissymmetry of lift. There is equal lift all through the rotor system with zero wind and zero airspeed. But as we start to move forward, or if there's a wind effect in us from any direction, and that goes for moving in any direction, then we begin to get unequal lift. In other words, any direction the wind is coming, it's going to create unequal lift. Any direction the wind or the helicopter is moving, we are going to get the symmetry of lift or unequal lift. For the purpose of this lesson, we'll talk about forward flight Again, having these blades frozen in action here for the purpose of the lesson. Let's say that the tip speed on this helicopter, meaning the speed of the tip of this blade, is 400 knots. Now, that's just a made-up number for the purpose of explaining this, and the tip speed on different helicopters is going to be different. And we will talk about tip speed and another lesson where we discuss coning. As this helicopter begins to move forward in flight, let's say we get up to 100 knots of forward flight. Now, this blade is seeing an extra 100 knots on top of the 400 that it's already moving. So we've got 500 knots. This blade is moving away from that 100 knots. So therefore this blade is seeing 300 knots. So the relative wind that is affecting these blades is creating a different angle of attack. You've got a greater angle of attack on the advancing side and a smaller angle of attack on the retreating side. This is where blade flapping comes in. In order to make this angle of attack equal on both sides, as the helicopter is in forward flight, the advancing blade must flap up. It 
flaps up in order to decrease the angle of attack. The retreating blade flaps down in order to increase the angle of attack, thus creating equal lift as a helicopter is in forward flight. Now, different rotor systems handle this differently. What we have pictured here is a two-bladed helicopter similar to a Robinson, and this would be a semi-rigid. So when one blade flaps up, one blade flaps down. They're semi-rigid. If this was a fully articulated rotor system, such as the Enstrom, each blade independently flaps and also leads and lags and feathers. If you have a rigid rotor system, then the blades flap by bending or flexing in their design. Now at some point, the helicopter can no longer flap enough to make the lift equal throughout the rotor system. At some point, this blade is going to be flapping down and it's going to exceed the critical angle of 15 degrees. It will stop equalizing lift and then you have what's called retreating blade stall. When you lose lift here off to the left of the helicopter, due to gyroscopic precession, you will feel that loss of lift 90 degrees later in the plane of rotation. 90 degrees later in the plane of rotation, we're going to feel that loss of lift. That means the back of the helicopter is going to go down, the front will pitch up in retreating blade stall. The onset of retreating blade stall can be uh, detected not only due to the attitude of the helicopter, but abnormal vibrations. Now, speed is not the only thing that can cause retreating blade stall. It is one of the things that can cause retreating blade stall. But another thing that can cause retreating blade stall would be low RPM, high gross weight, high density altitude, steep or abrupt turns, or maneuvers, turbulent air, Now, the way we correct for retreating blade stall, according to the helicopter flying handbook, is to lower the collective sum, to get rid of the angle of attack sum, and then slow the helicopter down by going aft on the cyclic slightly. So the first thing that you do is lower the collective, then slow the helicopter down by pulling back slightly on the cyclic. So this covers a lot. The symmetry of lift, flapping, retreating blade stall. Remember, the VNE or the never exceed speed in a helicopter is partially due to retreating blade stall, but it is not the only reason that we have a never exceed speed. It is also because the manufacturer has determined that speed as being the safe speed for that helicopter for other reasons as well, structural integrity and so forth. 
hope this helps and we'll see you in the next video.